This video was sponsored by NordVPN, but more on that in just a minute. What's going on, smart people? It's been a while since I've made a video with a suggestively helpful sounding title that didn't end up being a sarcastic skit. I'm growing up. Or maybe just running out of ways to make fun of freshman physics. Anyways, it's December, which means a lot of you in the US are gracefully wrapping up your semesters, or phrased in a little bit of a different way, uh, you're searching everywhere for the will to keep going. Especially around this time of year, I'll see comments from people saying that with final exams coming up and all of these assignments, their motivation is just at an all-time low. <laughs> and they'll ask me, what do I do to stay motivated studying physics? In fact, I see that question so much that I went into making this video expecting to uncover some neat motivational tricks to share with you all. But what I learned really quickly is that I am hardly ever motivated to study physics. And I think that might sound a little weird coming from a person who's made upwards of 500 physics videos, but that's the truth. So the point of this video is to convince you that you don't need to rely on motivation to do well in physics, and hopefully I'll highlight what I think the real issue could be, and we'll talk about ways to resolve it. And I'm gonna tell you right now that the real issue is not that there's just too much to watch on Netflix. In fact, that issue is not going away anytime soon, especially since you just started that NordVPN subscription giving you access to other countries' Netflix titles across the world, not to mention other streaming platforms. Now, if you don't know, NordVPN is a virtual private network that on top of offering additional security, gives you access to things like region-locked content around the world. Now, I haven't experienced this personally, but I have heard rumors that some people will be so desperate to watch something that they'll even throw on a flammable maths video. And if you're willing to do that, who knows what else you're recklessly clicking on. And in that case, you'd probably benefit most from NordVPN's CyberSec feature, which helps you block ads. And what is a flammable maths video if not one big ad, he says while plugging his sponsor. And it also protects you from malicious websites. Now my primary use of NordVPN is using it to connect to servers that give me the best ping while I'm just bank standing playing old school RuneScape. Username Stan Darsh, by the way. Now you can get started with a two year membership plus one additional month at a huge discount by clicking the link in the description or going to nordvpn.com slash Andrew Dotson. Thanks again, Nord, for sponsoring this video. Where the hell was that? Right, motivation. So to start off, you may have clicked on the video expecting this to be explaining how to motivate studying physics, like how to justify choosing this path. That's not what this video is. It's more concerned with the question of how to stay motivated while studying physics. So why do I say that I'm generally not the most motivated person? I think it has something to do with me not being the most excitable person in general. Like on an average day, I don't have physics office hours energy. I'm more like Ron Swanson energy. That analogy was probably better when I still had a beard. Uh, but that's not to say that I don't love physics. I do. I'm just probably not going to be stoked to spend my day reading about friction. There's a certain sense of enthusiasm that comes with being motivated. It's almost like being motivated to complete a task is another way of saying you feel like doing the task or you're excited about it, something like that. But realistically, how often do you feel that way in general? To me, motivation is kind of like a cheat code and asking how do I stay motivated is like asking how do I enable the cheat code throughout the entirety of the game. One, you're not gonna get good at the game that way. And two, I'm not sure you can do that in the first place. I don't care what your go-to motivational video is. You watch that every day for a month. Tell me it still does it for you. So I, I think that the key to getting your physics done is not these temporary and sporadic bursts of motivation, but in exercising something you are in control of, discipline. You rack a discipline! Nuh-uh, I don't rack a discipline! Now, I think it might sound like all I'm doing is saying the issue is using the wrong word, but I really think there's a shift in responsibility when we do that, because it's not really up to you whether you happen to naturally wake up feeling motivated, to what degree, on what day, about what topic. So if we attribute our failure to say study to a lack of motivation, then as a consequence, I think we feel less responsible for it and are more likely to take that path of least action. Because for me, it's so natural to go from it's not my fault to I'm not responsible for the outcome. So in that sense, motivation is a bit of a double-edged sword to me because it's nice, the more motivation you have, the less discipline you need. You don't have to push as hard when something is pulling you. But how was that discipline developed in the first place? Now, if it's not the only method, I think the more, most powerful way of developing discipline comes from voluntarily starting a task, preferably one you recognize the value of, 
at a time when you still don't feel like taking the first step. So to me, the most powerful opportunities to become a more disciplined person come at times when we feel the least motivated. Understanding the value of the task is so important because that's how we convince ourselves that the task is worth doing. Like before you say reading the entire chapter is worth your time, what do you expect to get out of it? And are you usually right when you assess the value of the task? That's how you build the confidence to trust yourself that when you say it's worth it, it really is. And for things like homework, where I think it's a lot harder to call your shot, so to speak, and identify what the punchline of the problem is going to be, uh, that's where track records are useful, right? The more I can quantify exactly what unpredictable value there was to the previous problems, the more I can go into the next problem and say, I don't know what I'm going to get out of this, but these previous ones have been pretty insightful. And that's why when you solve problems, don't just finish and move on. Think about what you just did. You already did most of the work. Now ask yourself, what did you get out of that problem? Ah, in this one, I saw that when I took this limit, this nasty crazy equation reduced to one I actually already knew that was simpler I'm seeing how simpler physics is contained in more general physics actually that's a cool way of testing that my answers are correct in the future like that's something I may not have predicted going into the problem I can't predict what I'm gonna get out of this next one but the previous ones have all been worth it so going into a task with a very specific uh, identification of the value is great but if you have a vague idea of the value like solving these problems will get me better at solving problems plus a track record of additional unpredicted value is just as good in my opinion and nowadays instead of asking will i get my work done well do i feel motivated i'll ask can i identify the value of the work and if so in one way or another i'll ask am i disciplined enough to get it done and because I think discipline is such an admirable quality of a physicist and just a person, I tend to not let myself get away with answering no. A disciplined physicist is thorough, they're dependable, and to me, most importantly, they're attentive. How many talks have you gone to where an hour goes by, the talk finishes, and then there's practically zero questions? How does that happen? How does a department invite someone to speak, prepare a talk that they've rehearsed for hours, and then no one in the audience feels responsible for paying enough attention to come up with a single question to ask? So, I mean, I could talk about actually talks for an entire video, and I know that there's exceptions. Some talks are horrible. Some people have severe question asking anxiety, but not everyone can be the exception, right? And I think that this is just an example of discipline showing up where you wouldn't expect it to be. I think a disciplined physicist would say, it doesn't matter if this talk is outside of my field, you still have my undivided attention, and at the end, I'm gonna ask you a thoughtful question. Now, I know I'm not saying anything revolutionary, but I also don't think it always has to be. Sometimes all we need is just a little change of perspective and some self-reflection. But whether you consider yourself disciplined or not, you don't have to start working towards it with the big intimidating stuff like school or diet and exercise, but it could be the little things like folding laundry when it's done. I will quite literally bring my laundry from the machine to my room and have it in the basket, be tempted to leave it there, recognize I should put it away, and I'll ask myself, am I really not disciplined enough to put my laundry away so I'll, I'll kind of talk shit to myself because I understand that I respond kind of positively to a little trash talk and you should point out these moments to yourself in the way that you know you're most receptive to criticism then you can have a little fun and just like blow accomplishing that small task way out of proportion like I do that way I'm, I'm kind of poking fun at it being small but I'm still letting myself feel the win and acknowledge that I'm moving forward nice job team with all that being said there's still been times for me and there might be times for you where we're relying on your discipline just doesn't work and it makes you feel like even worse and so I think this no matter how I feel I'm gonna get it done kind of slogan can't be taken too literally because every feeling has a source and the source matters there's a difference between fighting these one-off lazy days with discipline and trying to fight depression with discipline so you definitely should do that self-reflection and identify the source of your feelings before you just dismiss them. I do think, however, probably more helpful than this video was would be hearing uh, about things that you guys have experienced and what's gotten you through them, what's gotten you to get your work done in physics even though you didn't feel like it. So be sure to let us know in the comment section what's worked for you. And again, huge thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Remember to check the link in the description to get started on that subscription. And I'll see you guys in the comments.